by the power of the Lord, my generation will be a blessing unto me. In Jesus' name, so shall it be. By the power of the Lord, in Jesus' name. Before I formed thee in the womb, you were created for a purpose. You are a, you are a man and a woman on a mission. The Bible says, I knew thee. So, you are a man in the palm of the Almighty. Every human being sees their palm every day. And the Lord is saying, I have engraven you in the palms of my hand. And so, no matter what is happening, God is watching over you. No matter what is happening, no matter what is not happening, no matter the winds of life, no matter the storms of life, God is watching over you in Jesus' name. You will not fail. You will not fall. You will not falter in Jesus' name. And then with this grace of God in our life, we grow in it. We grow in it. Every living thing grows. And if the grace of God is there, the grace is supposed to be growing on daily basis. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 18. But grow in grace. And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to whom be glory both now and forever. And the church say, Amen. Amen. Grow in grace. The grace you had at conversion, grow in it. The grace you had at the time of well, sanctification, grow in it. The grace that you got that enabled you the power of the Holy Spirit, grow in it. Grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Don't just sit idle. Grow in grace. Grow in all that God has committed into your hand. And so we see there is a creative power of, for saving grace. Creating power for saving grace. Not that alone. We have the convincing power of grace in our lives also. Convincing creative, convincing, we also have the converting power of grace. And then we have compelling proof of sanctifying grace. When you are sanctified, there will be a proof of that in your life. And now there is credible power for serving grace. Credible power to serve with grace, by grace and through grace. Come back to the first thing, creative power of saving grace. Titus chapter 2 again, from verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation, that bringeth salvation, has appeared to all men. We all have access to it. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly laws, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Not in another world. Not in the grave. Not in purgatory. But in this present world. Looking for that blessed hope. And the glorious appearing of the great God. And our Savior Jesus Christ. Who gave himself for us. That he might redeem us from all iniquity. And purify unto himself. What kind of people? Peculiar people. Zealous of good works. You can see our peculiarity makes us available to do great work, good work with zeal. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. When that grace comes, it convicts man of sin, convicts the world of sin, convicts the sinner. And makes the sinner to realize, I have sinned. I have done wrong. I have not done well. I need a change in my life. Second Corinthians chapter 7, looking at it from verse 9. Now I rejoice, not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrow to repentance. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage by us, by, by us in nothing. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh dead. When there is that conviction in the heart, then it leads to conversion. It leads to conversion. Except a man be born again, 
He cannot see the kingdom of God, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And so when the conversion comes, we are told in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, that by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. That same grace leads to sanctification, purification of our spirit, of our soul, and of our body. And uh, Paul the Apostle said in 1 Corinthians 15, 10, he said, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. I pray the grace of God in our lives will not be in vain in Jesus' name. Amen. And Paul is saying there is a connection between grace and service. He went forth to say, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Anything we do, everything we do is by the grace of God. By the grace of God. And that grace will continue to multiply in Jesus' name. I said that grace has a compelling proof of sanctification in our lives. Colossians chapter 3, I look at it from verse 8. Colossians chapter 3 verse 8, but now ye also put off all this anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, saying that ye have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man. You put off some things and then you put on some other things so that you are not naked. And that you put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor circumcision, barbarian, city, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as elect of God, holy and beloved bowers of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity. I need an amen there. Put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your heart. To the which also ye are called in one body. And be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Teaching and admonishing one another. In psalms and hymns. And spiritual songs. Singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. And whatsoever, verse 17. Whatsoever, shall we all read it together? Everybody whatsoever want to go and whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Praise the Lord. It is that grace of God that grants us all the fruits of the Spirit that we need as enumerated in Galatians chapter 5. Verses 22 and 23. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. And uh, when we have this grace in our lives, then we'll be able to serve the Lord with all our heart, with all our mind. And so, and this kind of grace will be a credible power. The dynamite power of the Holy Spirit. Acts of, uh, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 8 says, Behold, I give unto you, sorry, Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says, um, Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be my witnesses, where? In Jerusalem, in all Judea, 
in Samaria and then unto the uttermost part of the earth. I pray the Lord will use us all in Jesus' name. So, as I try to wrap up this on grace, I look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28, still on service. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. We need grace to serve God. And so this type of grace, I'll tell, you, I'll, I'll tell you very quickly the 12 type of grace. Number one, growing in grace. Growing grace. We need to grow in grace. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. With the grace, we grow in the knowledge of Christ. Not that alone. We grow in the, in, in Christ, into Christ. We grow into Christ in all things. In all things. Whether physical or spiritual. We grow into Christ in all things. With grace, we grow in faith. We grow in faith. Every day of our life, our level of growth is increasing. And that is the manifestation of us growing in in grace and not that alone we grow in the spreading of the gospel we grow in the spreading of the gospel if you look at uh, Ephesians chapter 6 one of the uh, armor that we need to put on is our feet sure uh, with the with the preparation of the gospel we grow in the spreading of of the gospel and acts of the apostles chapter 19 verse 20 says so mightily grew the word of god and prevail in our community in the community the word of god will prevail in our states the word of god will prevail in our churches the word of god will prevail and then we grow in wisdom we grow in wisdom all these are the things that grace brings into our life Luke chapter 2, verse 40, and the child grew and was strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. And the grace of God was upon him. So when we talk about grace, it's not just about salvation alone. It's a growing grace because it is a great grace. Not that alone, we grow in our spiritual service unto the Lord. We grow in our service. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abandoned in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. We grow also in the gift of the Spirit. We grow in the gift of the Spirit. Unfortunately, many of us in the church, we have the knowledge of the Bible, but we don't apply that knowledge. We, so, we don't see the effect of that knowledge. We need the gift of the Spirit, and we must grow in it. We must grow in it. If you look at our Father in the Lord, he started as a teacher. And from being a teacher, he moved on to the office of a pastor. And then from being a pastor, he moved on to the office of an evangelist. He moved on to the office of a prophet. And by the grace of God, he's operating as an apostle. I need a better amen. amen. He began with conversion. And gradually, moving up, moving up, moving up. And at this latter end or part of his life, you can see more of the manifestation of the grace of God upon his life. Growing grace. Growing grace. And growing in the gift of the Spirit. That is not all. We also grow in the bearing of the fruit of the Spirit. These are the things that grace does. That's why we say grace for life and ministry to enable us enjoy our Christian life and spiritual life in every area of life. John chapter 2 verse, uh, sorry, John chapter 15 verse 2. 
For every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit. Verse 8. Verse 8. John 15, verse 8. Herein is my Father glorified. In your life, God will be glorified. In my life, God will be glorified. In our ministries, God will be glorified. Here is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. Please look up here. If you're a pastor, if you're a worker, if you're a Christian, and there is no growth in your life, no fruitfulness, it's just the same thing you are doing day in, day out. God is not glorified. But he wants to be glorified. And he will be glorified in Jesus' name. Look at that verse 8 again. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bring forth, that ye bear much fruit, so that ye be my disciple. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Number 10, we grow in maturity. We grow in maturity. And uh, as part of the maturity is the ministry that God has given us to understand this is leadership meeting. We grow in maturity. And you say, I'm not a worker, but you are born again. You grow maturing on daily basis to the glory of the name of the Lord. And then we grow in the word of God. We grow in hearing the word of God and obeying the word of God, understanding the word of God in everything that we do. And not that alone, we also grow in love. We grow in love, loving one another. If you were here two nights ago, you'll see what we did in terms of interpersonal relationship and that changed everything we're doing over here. It was beautiful. It was awesome. And we grow in that. We don't just limit that to the mini congress. We don't just limit that to when we come for meeting or fellowship. But we take that to our churches. We take that to our neighborhood. We take that to our states. And we grow in love. Love for God. Love for our neighbor. Love for the things of God. Love for the work of God. Love for eternity. And I pray this grace will increase and abound in us and through us in Jesus' name. I get to the second point, testimonial proof of gifts for ministerial excellence. Testimonial. When we say testimonial, it means something that, is, that can be attested to. Something that can be proven. Something that people can relate with. People look at your life and they see what the Lord is doing in you and through you because of the gift of God that is bestowed upon you in ministry and for ministry. Can you look at yourself? Look at your life as a worker and say to yourself, by the grace of God, I am moving forward. By the grace of God, I am moving forward. And let me tell you something, there is nothing like stagnation. No, there is nothing like stagnation. It's either you are making progress or you are retrogressing. It's either you are going forward or you are going backward. You cannot just be in one place indefinitely. No, something is happening. Even when you don't see those things happening, uh, decay is taking place. Deterioration is taking place. Backsliding is taking place. And so, it's either you are moving forward or you are going backward. But I declare in the name of the Lord, you will move forward. In your spiritual life, you will move forward. In your family life, you will move forward. Physical life, business life, your career, academic life, you will move forward in Jesus' name. And so, the gift of God is not only for preaching alone. It should affect every area of our life. It should affect everything that we do. The Bible says that whatsoever you lay your hands upon to do will prosper. Do you believe that? I said, do you believe that? Anything, everything you lay your hands upon to do, that goes beyond the ministry alone. But then when I say ministerial excellence, understand. Anywhere you go, even on your job, you are ministering to people. 
In your family, you are ministering to people. In the church, you are ministering to people. Anywhere you go, see yourself as a minister of the gospel. And say to yourself, I need what it takes to excel, and you will excel. Daniel was in Babylon. He was not in the church. Daniel had the gift. He excelled in Babylon. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, they ex say, excelled in a strange land. Joseph was in Egypt. He excelled over there. Mordecai was in Shushan. He excelled over there. Esther got into the palace. She excelled over there. And um, uh, uh, Ruth got into Bethlehem, Judah. She excelled over there. So it's not just in the church alone. No. Anywhere you go, you want to excel. Jacob was at, at the time of the Old Testament. Anywhere Joseph got into, Jacob excelled. He got to the house of Laban. Everything turned around. I declare in the name of the Lord. Anywhere you get to, things will turn around. You are a minister of the gospel. Yes, but not just the gospel alone, you are a minister of life. See yourself that way. And that, because of that, you don't talk anyhow, you don't walk anyhow, you don't act anyhow, you don't dress anyhow, you don't behave anyhow. Because you are the representative of the Almighty God. And you want to always say to yourself, anything I lay my hands upon to do will prosper. You know what that tells me? That if a businessman or a businesswoman here, Prosperity is your portion. If you're into any kind of employment, prosperity is your portion. Joseph was working for Pharaoh. He was promoted. But before he got to work for Pharaoh, he worked for Potiphar. He was promoted. Trouble got him into prison. He was promoted. He appeared before Pharaoh. He was promoted. Anywhere you go, I prophesy in the name of Jesus, you will be promoted in Jesus' name. Let the mark of the king be seen in us. We are the children of the almighty God. Amen. Whatever gift we need. And when I say gift, you think it's just about speaking in tongues. No, it's not just about speaking in tongues. It goes beyond speaking in tongues. And that's why I have to tell you of all these people that it's not just about speaking in tongues alone, but let the mark of the Lord be upon you for good in Jesus' name. First Corinthians chapter 12, from verse 4, Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are dif uh, differences of administration, but the same Lord. Please pay attention here. The Bible says differences of administration differences in organization now you see what i'm talking about that is not just about preaching alone yes preaching is included teaching is included uh, 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 counseling is included praying for people is included but then how about in organization how about in administration how to push things together, how to work with people, how to organize people, how to pull the right peg in the right, uh, the, in the right hole, round peg in the round hole, square peg in the uh, uh, square, square hole, and make everything to mesh together and work together to God's glory. In such a way that people will say, wow, the era of wow has come into your life. Verse 6. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 6 now. And there are diversities of operations. But it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. <laughs> Look up here. Look up here. To so who is the manifestation of the Spirit given? I ask you a question. I can hear you. Every man. Every, the man there is generic. It's to every man, to every woman. If you're a woman, the hand of God is upon you. Deborah was a prophetess in Israel. 
the hand of God was upon her. When she told the captain of the army to go and fight as Sisera and Jabin the king, the captain said, I will not go except you go with me. The time has come. The people will not be able to do anything until you get there in Jesus' name. They gather together, they plan together, they say things, but they say that we have to wait for her. We have to wait for him because of the anointing of God upon your life in Jesus' name. We're a different person. The Bible says we are peculiar. 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 The world will see Christ in you. You know, God said unto Joshua, he said, now. Nah. Somebody say, now. Nah. Somebody say, now. Nah. He said, now will I begin to magnify you before Israel. The era of your magnification has come. In the name of Jesus. But then understand, it's not by folding of arms. It's not by sleeping indefinitely. It's not by thoughtless lies. You have to be up and doing. You have to be proactive. You have to get yourself involved. You have to be determined to make a difference in life. It's not just by mere wishing and wishing and wishing. I wish, I wish, I wish. No, you have to be up and doing. I look around. I have never found any rich man that is a lazy man. They always walk hard. They always burn the midnight oil. If you really want this excellence in your life, you want to make a difference in your life and your generation, go the extra mile. Somebody say, go the extra mile. And the Lord will give you the grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 9. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. To another faith, by the same spirit. To another, the gift of healing. By the same spirit. To another, the working of miracle. To another, prophecy. To another, the standing of spirit. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongue. But all these worketh that one and the same same spirit. Dividing to every man. See the word every man. Severally as he will. First day. Body is one and had many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. Please pay attention here. We may fall into the error of saying, this is my gift. Gift of prophecy. That's all I have. The error of, this is my gift, the gift of healing. That is all I have. That is an error. You can move from one gift to another gift. Yes. Somebody just means that one. Yes. Remember, I told you according to the scripture, you grow from grace to grace. And then you go from glory to glory. Praise the Lord. So, if you have this gift, I told you about our father in the Lord, he could have said, well, and to be honest with you, he used to say it many years back, I'm a teacher and I stay in my office. But the time came, growth came, grace expanded, and he realized that, yes, I am a teacher, the last in the least of the fivefold ministry. But that is not the best, the, the, the all that God has gotten for me. And so, according to him, years back, I had him. He said, it took him about two years of praying to become or receive the gift of a pastor. Before then, many were saying, you can do it, you can do it. But he went into prayer. And then, the pastoral ministry came in. He saw the difference between a pastor and a teacher. The teacher comes with authority. The pastor comes with meekness. He's a shepherd. He's caring. 
And then he realized that to be a pastor, you are limited again in a way to the four corners of the church. What do you do? You need the gift of an evangelist. And he labored and labored and labored. It's not just by mere wish. I'm saying all this to tell you that you will remain where you are for as long as you limit yourself. But in the name of the Lord, we are moving forward. No more limitation in Jesus' name. We shatter every glass standing over our heads in Jesus' name. Anything the Lord has ordained that we accomplish in our lifetime, we will accomplish. You know, the richest place in the world, the richest city in the world, who knows it? The graveyard. <laughs> the graveyard. There are a lot of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, gift, grace, power, anointing, unction, and power that were never put or used in the life of the man, in the life of the woman, and everything perished with that individual in the grave. But going forward, we will empty ourselves. Going forward, we will impact our generation in Jesus' name. We have the grace. The grace is not only for us to make it to heaven, but to turn the world of our time upside down. That is where gift comes in. Amen. Romans chapter 12, verse 3. For I say through the grace, look at it again, grace, giving unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we be many are one body in Christ. And every one member one of another having then can you see paul the lawyer the attorney was going somewhere beginning with grace and going into gift having then gifts different according to the grace that is given to us we had that prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith or ministry. Let us wait on our ministry or he that teacheth on teaching or he that exhorted on exhortation. But he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Cheerfulness. With cheerfulness. But remember, if you are beginning from somewhere, a little child growing up is seeing everybody walking, running, doing things. The child will first of all want to stand up. But the child will not say, oh, all I can do is just to stand up. The child also wants to take steps. You will take steps of faith. The child always wants to begin to walk. You will walk into your destiny. Yeah. The child also wants to begin to run. You will run into blessings in Jesus' name. Yeah. This is your time. This is our era. This is our dispensation. No more shall we limit ourselves in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. First Peter chapter 4, verse 10. First Peter chapter 4, as every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another. I look at three things. Number one, the types of gifts. The types of gifts. Number two, the purpose of gifts. And number three, the proof of gifts. What are the types of gifts? Number one, the word of wisdom. Number two, the word of knowledge. Number three, faith. Number four, the gift of healing. Number five, walking of miracles. 
I read the passage to you before, so I'm just listing out the gifts now. What's the next number? Huh? Number six. I just want to know how many of you are following. Okay, not everybody is following. I start again. Number one, the word of wisdom. Number two, the word of knowledge. Number three, three faith. Number four, the gift of healing. Number five, the working of miracles. And now number six, prophecy. Number seven, the standing of spirit. Number eight, diverse kinds of tongues. Number nine, interpretation of tongues. Praise the Lord. Now, most of us will stop there. But that is not the end of it all. Amen? Don't limit yourself. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. And God has set some in the church. First apostles, secondary prophets. Thirdly, um, teachers, after that, miracles, then gifts of healing, helps. You see, help is coming there. It's also a gift. Government is coming there. That is where administration comes in. Organization comes in. Investment comes in. Finance comes in. How you receive money, how you spend money, how you lead people, how you guide people, how you instruct people. All these are still gifts of the Spirit. And then diversities of tongue. How do you minister? The letter kill it. It is the spirit that gives life. And the Bible says, all the gifts are for the edification and the benefit of the church, of the saints. What is the purpose of gifts in our life? Number one, to em it empowers us to teach, to lead, to encourage, to comfort, to show mercy, and to discern. Gates, I repeat, empowers us to teach, to lead, to encourage, to comfort, to show mercy, and to discern. Number two, gates helps us to manifest grace and the power of God and the love of God among humanity. It helps us to manifest the grace, the power, and the love of God, of the Spirit, among humanity. Whether in the public places, private places, within families, or individuals, anywhere we go, everywhere we go, the gift of God will be made manifest. Number three, gifts. Is for the purpose of helping us to make the preaching of the gospel effective by giving supernatural confirmation to the message. Look up, please. When we talk about supernatural confirmation, give me an example of supernatural confirmation. Anybody? I'm sorry? Healing during ministration, yes. Any other confirmation? Deliverance, another confirmation. Holy Ghost baptism, another confirmation. Resting the dead. Conversion of souls, praise the Lord. Remember, these signs. These signs. These signs. When you go on the street, you see the signpost that directs you and tells you where you are going, the signpost. Not only that, you see signboards that tell you of things. These signs shall follow them that believe. From today, anywhere you go, the signs will follow you. Everywhere you go, your life will be a life of wonder in Jesus' name. The 
gift also helps us to meet human need. To meet the needs of humanity. To strengthen and to build up the church of Christ as well as individual believers. So many at times when we're complaining about things in the church, things not in the church, understand it's because certain gifts are lacking. The pastor should begin to pray. The leaders should begin to pray. The members of the church should begin to pray that these gifts, the Lord will supply us in Jesus' name. Finally, the gift will enable us to wage effective spiritual war against the forces and the powers of darkness. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Amen. Amen. Proof of the gifts. Bezaleel in the Old Testament was gifted by God on how to construct the temple in the wilderness. Everywhere Jesus went, Acts chapter 10, verse 38, God endowed him with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about healing and delivering all manner of sicknesses of and diseases. Jesus made the dumb to speak, the deaf to hear, the blind to to seek, the paralytic to walk. When money was needed, and I know somebody here needs money. Amen? He simply told Peter, go to the riverside, catch a fish, the money is in the fish. Every resource you need to succeed in life, the Lord will supply. Elisha got to a place. And they said there was a problem with the land. The water was bitter. Nothing was working. Elijah said, get me a bowl. Get me water. Get me salt. He turned everything around. Everywhere you go, things will turn around. Just believe it. And begin to walk by faith. Act by faith. Elijah confronted Ahab. And there was a turning point in the land. It's still amazing to me till today. After Elijah prayed and told the servant to go and look. The first time, and the servant says, I saw nothing. The second time, I saw nothing. The third time, he said, I saw a little cloud. A cloud like a little finger. And Elijah said, that is it. That is it. He said, tell Ahab, there is going to be an abundance of rain. Ahab got on the animal, on the mole riding. Elijah ran with leg. Elijah outran the man on the horse. You will outrun your enemy. I said, you will outrun your enemy. In the name of Jesus, we need proofs today. We need proofs today. Somebody was just sharing with me yesterday. He said, Pastor, do you remember this person we brought to you that was dumb, that couldn't speak? Of course, I don't remember. Praise God. That you prayed. That day nothing happened. The following day nothing happened. I think by maybe two days after they got a call, the person began to speak. <laughs> and then as soon as she said that, the husband was there when she was saying it. Just yesterday. Then I remember I was invited to a church. And then after the service that day, they brought these twins. You have seen the pastor of the church here before. I've said this before. And they brought these twins. And then, uh, they, they were four years old at that time. They are big children right now. The twins, neither of them could talk at age four. 
And then I lay hands on this, lay hands on that. And to God's glory, by Monday morning, they got to school. They left them still dumb. Saturday night, dumb. Sunday, dumb. Monday, they left them dumb. They got to school. When it seems like nothing is happening, I can hear somebody. I cannot hear somebody. Something is happening. When you have prayed and it seems like nothing is happening, God is working it out. Be patient with God. Sunday morning, there was a call from the school, the special school the children were going. The two of them, not one. The power of God had touched them. They began to speak. It will happen in your life. It will happen in your ministry. Proofs. We need those proofs today. Paul, the apostle, everywhere he went, many, uh, miracle signs and wonders follow him. Peter, the Bible said, even the shadow of Peter, shadow. Peter didn't even know anything happening. He was just going, and people were just saying, let's just get into a shadow. Your shadow will work miracle. Yeah. This is our season. This is our dispensation. This is our time. Christ will be seen in us and through us in Jesus' name. Yeah. Moses ran away from Egypt because he didn't want to die. And God said, Moses, go back to Egypt. Everywhere you have run away from because of fear, you are going back to conquer. You are going, going back to possess. And then he had other stick that he was using to rear sheep. And it's like, what do you have in your hand? Stick? That stick will work miracle. The widow woman in the book of Kings, had only one bottle of oil, and yet she was in debt. The bottle of oil became the source of blessing. Listen to me. Listen to me. I don't care your state right now, physically, spiritually, financially. Whatsoever you have, God will turn it around. It will be a source of your blessing and miracle and healing and deliverance in Jesus' name. Yeah. Triumphant people in glory for magnificent ecstasy. Hallelujah. I'm going higher, yes I am. I'm going higher someday. Hallelujah. Going with Jesus to stay. I'm going above the shadow into the presence of God. Into the presence of Jesus. I'm going higher someday. Revelation chapter 21. Read it from verse 1, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God, out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. It's coming to you. And he will dwell with them. He's coming to you. And they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And, in a, and amen. amen. And God shall wipe away all tears from your eyes. Amen. And there shall be no more death. Amen. Neither sorrow. Nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things have passed away. Every pain of your life will pass away. Every problem will be rolled away. Verse 5, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. I make all things 
In your life, everything is becoming new. In my life, everything is becoming new. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That is a life of ecstasy. And remember, I was talking about going from glory to glory. It means, while you are here on earth, your glory has begun. And it will continue until you get into the real glory in glory in Jesus' name. Reality of glory. Resting for glory. Rewards in glory are three things I'm going to address here. Abraham lived here on earth. You heard about Abraham's bosom in glory. Amen. It is real. Moses died here on earth. Elijah died here, uh, here on earth. On the day of transfiguration, the two of them showed up in glory again. It is real. Stephen died a martyr. But then before he passed on to glory, his eyes opened. He saw heaven. He saw Jesus Christ standing by the right hand side of the master to welcome home the hero of faith. We we'll make it to glory in Jesus' name. Heaven is real. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. We shall not all sleep. When the rapture takes place, if we are here by then, we shall be all raptured together. If we die before then, our dead body, amen, will come up from the grace and we go with him in glory in Jesus' name. It is real. But then what do we do? Racing for glory. First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. Know you know that they which run in a race run all, but one receive the prize. So run that ye may obtain. We must run lawfully. We must run according to the will, the plan, and the purpose of God. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou also art called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. The Lord is telling us to run with all our heart, with all our might, with all the strength of God in us. I get to the final point the rewards in glory. Rewards in glory. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. 2 Corinthians 3.18 But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image. Tell me what follow. Change from glory to glory. Even as by the Spirit of the Lord, we are going from glory to glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. When we get to heaven, there'll be a crown of life for us. There'll be incorruptible crown for us. There'll be cr crown of righteousness. There'll be crown of glory. There'll be crown of rejoicing. Crown of rejoicing. Crown of rejoicing. Rise upon your feet. Don't close your Bible yet. We're going to read 1 Corinthians. Rise upon your feet with your Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I look at it from verse 39. All flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of flesh of man. Another flesh of beasts. Another of fishes. And another of birds. But there is, but there are also celestial body. And bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and that glory of the stars, for one star differed from another star in glory. Your star will shine. Your glory will not go down. Every blessings and the good of your life that have been buried will be exhumed. By the power of the Lord, King of kings, ancient of days, you will prevail. Amen. Over the problems of life, over the troubles of life, you will conquer temptation. Amen. 
you will overcome the battles of life. You will prevail over the problems in Jesus' name. The grace and the gift for life and ministry. Let us pray. Ask for that grace of God in your life. The grace for holy life, righteous life, pure life, upright life. The grace to live an acceptable life before the Lord. You need to give to make a difference in your life, in your ministry, in your calling, in everything that you lay your hands upon to do. Problems have always followed you. Troubles have always followed you. Things will change going forward. You'll enjoy the life of God, the blessings of God. we pray. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Father we thank you for this message that you have given unto us. We have received this grace, the grace that will make us grow and we will grow in it in Jesus name. We have seen that Lord you are expecting us to grow in it from glory unto glory. We are trusting you that even our salvation experiences our sanctification experiences and our spirit uh, baptism experiences we're trusting you that we will move from one ladder to another ladder and up and up until we see you face to face in the mighty name of jesus christ thank you everlasting father you will be made to see that every living thing grows we come against with this band we reject all fruitlessness in our lives we will give birth to spiritual children in the mighty name of jesus thank you everlasting father because our churches our ministries our families will see this increase in due time in jesus precious name we have prayed amen somebody praise the lord a mini congress as well as our regional combined service but before we share the grace in fellowship i would like all our pastors to uh, wait behind pastor would like all our pastors to wait behind to see him praise the lord and uh, there are instructions that will come to us but before we even do that you know it's very important that we pray for our region of us here amen can we do that wherever you are Across the region everywhere I want you to just stretch your hand wherever you are and just stretch your hand towards him and just stretch for your hand wherever you are just stretch for your hand and pray that that the grace of God upon his life will make him to glow pastor winger let's pray that this grace will be sufficient grace this grace will cause him to flourish
I want you to pray with all of your heart. I want you to pray with all of your heart. I want you to pray with all of your heart. I want you to pray with all of your heart. That God will do something new in his life and ministry. That God will do something new in his life, in his ministry, in his family. I want you to pray with all of your heart. This is the God set man over the house. That the Lord will do something new. Something new. Something new. Something new. Something new. Something new. The Lord has made him unstoppable. He will remain 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 unstoppable. No weapon formed against him will prosper. No weapon formed against him will prosper. Every tongue that rises up against him in judgment will condemn. Pray with all of your heart. Pray with fire. 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 We believe God for something new. Supernatural move of God. The God will take him to greater heights. The God will take him to greater heights. He will remain unstoppable. He will remain unstoppable. Every power of darkness that is arranged against him will scatter. The powers of darkness will scatter. The powers of darkness will scatter. When it decreases, it will be established more. In the name of Jesus. Pray. He prays for us, we must pray for him. He prays for us, we must pray for him. He prays for us, we must pray for him. He prays for us, we must pray for him. He prays for us, we must pray for him. He cares for us, we must care for him. He cares for us, we must care for him. He desires the best for us, we must desire the best for him. Pray with all of your heart. Let the fire flow. Let the re rivers, rivers of prayer, let it flow from your heart. Let it flow from your heart. Let it flow from your heart. Something must happen. Something must happen. Something must happen. Something must happen. The work must prosper the more. The ministry must prosper the more. The family must see greater glory. In the name of Jesus. So Something must happen. Something must happen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Our Father in heaven, we bless your name for your son, your servant, your set man over the house, our Father in the Lord over the region. We appreciate you for his life. He's been an example to us. He's been an encouragement to us. He's been a blessing to us. We appreciate him dearly. We love him with all our hearts. And we just bless you, Father, for giving him to us. No doubt it's a gift to your church. No doubt it's a gift to the body of Christ. No doubt it's a gift to this region and the entire nation. No doubt it's a gift to the nations of the world. We just praise you for his life. Lord, accept our thanks and praises in Jesus' name. We ask, oh, Father, that your grace will be multiplied on his life. Lord, multiply your grace. Lord, multiply your grace over his life in Jesus' name. Father, we pray that the gifts will be multiplied. The anointing will be multiplied. Father, we pray for fresh unction, fresh anointing over his life and ministry in Jesus' name. Lord, we're praying this very time, this very day, will mark a turning point. A turning point in his ministry. A turning point in his life. A turning point in his, in his family. In the name of Jesus, we decree together as the church of the living God that no weapon formed against him will prosper. No weapon formed against his family will prosper. Every tongue that rises against him in judgment, we condemn. We condemn. We condemn. We condemn. Every force.
powers of darkness and every power of darkness we command you to scatter now arise oh god let the enemies be scattered let the powers of darkness be scattered let the powers of wickedness be scattered in the name of jesus oh god we praise you his desire over the church will be fulfilled you will take this church to greater heights lord even in the mission field that you have sent him in all the regions in philippines and all the other places fresh breakthroughs fresh breakthroughs in the name of jesus lord you have helped him to be unstoppable until now he will not be stopped the powers of darkness will not be able to stop him he will remain unstoppable in jesus name lord we just pray from the depth of our hearts you will shower your power upon him you will shower your favor upon him you will shower your glory upon him you will shower your mercies upon him you will shower your victories upon him in the name of jesus and this work will prosper them all and this work will go to greater heights and we will see greater glory in the name of jesus from glory to glory from glory to glory from glory to glory from glory to glory in the name of jesus thank you father blessed be the name of the lord in jesus mighty name we are praying jam your hands together for jesus Praise the Lord. I thank you. presence of his uh, dear wife. Uh, he is the zonal coordinator, when we say zona, uh, here in the U.S. we use different language, back in Africa they use different language, but give the language to the language, <laughs> to the linguist, praise the Lord. He's a zonal coordinator in charge of different countries uh, in the French-speaking area, and he is in the person of Pastor Odumosi. Yes, sir, if you don't mind coming out, sir, so that we can see you. Where is uh, Mama? Please come with him. Come with him. Praise the Lord. And uh, actually, when we bought this property, uh, that year they were here. Amen. Uh, when we started our first church here in Kingston, they were here. The first convention, they were here. Before this place became what it is, they were here. Praise the Lord. Uh, Pastor, say hello to your children. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Actually, it's been a thing of joy all the time to have the privilege to be here. And um, particularly this mini congress has been a wonderful time. And uh, I must say I've learned quite a lot. I even raised up my hand yesterday. I wanted to say something, but I think the time was not enough. But really, it's been a blessed time. And I pray that I could see our aspiration, our, our desire for the growth of the church the Lord will grant the desires of your heart. Everything you have planned, particularly for the youth, for the young adults, everything God will back you up. Amen. You will see success. Amen. 
Uh, I remember at the early days, it used to be hard, but you will get there. The Lord that built his church to this level will not forget you. He will make this um, the region an example in the United States. Yeah. You are doing wonderfully well. When I, um, our father in the law was asking me where I was and what I was permitting, what I was doing, where did I worship? I told him at uh, Kingston. He said, How far is that Kingston to where you are? I said, It's about two hours' drive. He said, what? You take two hours drive to go to church? I said, courtesy of the pastor. <laughs> the pastor picks us up, and it's been a wonderful time. Kingston Church is a great church. It's a growing church. By the grace of God, it will, it will, it will stand in Jesus' name. But the powers of darkness cannot withstand it. It has come to stay. It will stay. The glory of God will continue to shine in this place more and more in Jesus' name. Amen. And we will live long enough to share together in it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor, for the privilege. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good all the time. The Lord is here. And we are going with him. Thank you, sir. Let's, let's, we can do better than that. Praise the Lord. Have your seat. Uh, praise the Lord. Um, very quickly, I need to uh, say this. As you know, that Deep Alive Bible Church is not just an international, international church anymore. It is now a global church. And we have a lot of ministries that have been springing up in different and diverse ways. And we have people from different parts of the globe representing us at the global front. And the work of the ministry is expanding by the day. And uh, we have people in different parts of the world that don't speak the language we speak. I'm not talking about your local language, I'm talking about the general language, English. Uh, and we need people that can help us in this area. Now, pay attention. If I say how many of you speak Swahili? You say, I don't speak Swahili. If I say, do you speak Tagalog? You say, no. Uh, don't worry whether you speak the language or you don't speak the language. Amen? There is a special way that they will put you through within a short time, you will be amazed. Amen? Amen? If you want me to start speaking now, you think I'm speaking in tongues. And yet I'm speaking a different language. Very, very easily. Within a few weeks, you'll find yourself in a different planet. We need six people amen that are willing and interested to help us in this don't worry about whether you speak a different language or not your own language where you were born you can't even speak it well anyway so don't worry about it. <laughs> praise God don't worry about whether I speak the language or not. I just need volunteers. Praise the Lord. Or if you know somebody or people that are good with things like that, working with people, just indicate, raise up your hand. And I hope this will not take us one hour to do. 
All right, thank you. I'm seeing hands already. Please stand on your feet. God bless you. God bless you. Stand on your feet. Yes. 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 Thank you. Stand on your feet. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. One, two, three, four, five. One more. Who is that blessed man or woman? Anointed. Appointed. Approved. Who is the final person? Who is that one that is saying, should I, should I not? Praise the Lord. I need one more, but three more people got up. What are you going to do? Put your hands together for the Lord. And another extra one. I tell you, I, I need six. Now I have nine. That is, what do you call that now? Co. What do you call that? Co. Uh, combo package. Praise the Lord. Overflow. Making ten. Now I have ten. Now. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, the ten of you, please come out very quickly. Very quickly. Very quickly. I have other areas of work, but for the fact that you offer to serve in this capacity, heaven will serve you. Amen. Your generation will serve you. Amen. Amen. Your light will not grow dim. Have you ever heard of Oturugweke before? <laughs> Somebody say amen. You know, <laughs> our mommy, Pastor Mrs. Odumosu, was telling me two days ago. She said, Pastor, a few years ago, we were talking at New York. She said, by the time we finished talking, I didn't know when I put that in my pocket. <laughs> the money the GS just gave us, I just dropped 500 out of it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Did I just say that you need anointing today? That you need the gift? It's coming upon you in Jesus' name. Amen. When you call for one, ten will follow you. Amen. Anointing. Follow me. Anointing, follow me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Anointing, follow me. One more time. Anointing, follow me. Anointing, follow me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Anointing, follow me. Amen. Pastor Ahmed, please help to get the names of the people. Thank you so much, Pastor Ajay. I have a good news for you. Amen. What's the meaning of Bethel? Huh? House of bread. How can you come to the house of bread and go hungry? Before you go, there is food waiting for you. Praise God. Make sure you get your own before you go so that the food is not wasted. Oh, well, in the Philippines, in the church, when I do like this, everybody say, oh, that means something new is coming. Can we try that? Oh. One more time. Oh. Praise the Lord. You have to come with a strategy. Here in the U.S. it is combo. But over it is, praise God. We have two people that are celebrating their birthday today. Wow. 
and we are going to pray for them. One of them is a little child, a little girl. The other, another one is a big madam. Praise the Lord. Are you done? All right. Okay, just to save time, um, don't write all the names they give you. Some of you have like 10 names. <laughs> just, just give us the first and the last name on your contact information and we'll be fine with that. God bless you. I wish you have two so that they can start from there and start uh, writing as well. You know, two days ago, I was telling all the pastors and the pastor's wife that I feel really blessed that God put me in your midst. And I'm, I'm, and I'm honest, I'm sincere. There is no other better place I think I would have been in life than in your midst. People that love, that cares, that pray for you, that are passionate about you, that believes in you, that works with you, work with you, the Lord will work with you. Amen. And as you make my life and ministry easy, God will make you as much easier. Amen. In Jesus' name. Thank you all. God bless you. All right. Um, Pastor Boateng, where is the baby? Bring the baby out. Amen. Amen. Since uh, she's uh, sleeping, why don't you just give you a chair to sit down? Uh, Pastor, help me here. Don't worry, don't worry. And give him a chair to sit down. Amen. Let's get one more chair. Sister Amnesoma, come. Salome, the next time I'm going to call you out, huh? it's not going to be for birthday. Yeah. I need a better amen. amen. How many of you enjoyed the priest worship today? Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. God bless you. Church, shall we rise up and pray for this? Our brethren, our daughter, and our sister that has, they are celebrating their new age. New things begin to happen in their life. Amen. It will be the beginning of a new day. Amen. New blessing. Amen. Open door. Amen. Anointing. Divine provision. Amen. Supernatural power of the Lord. Please begin to pray for them. 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 In case you are here and today is your birthday, also you can join them. Or maybe this month is your bath month. You can join them. You were born in the month of October. You can come out. Because heaven is going to open today. The month of October begins with letter O. The Lord will open the doors of opportunities. Unlimited opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray.
I request that our daddy, Pastor Dumosu, please come out here to help make an apostolic pronouncement upon them. Amen. Heavens will open. Amen. Amen. It looks like there are some Oliver Twists here. Somebody's asking that September should join. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Wherever you are, September, the miracle is coming to you. Amen. I am August. It's coming to me also. <laughs> <laughs> Baba is July. It's coming to me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The blessings of the Lord will be upon you. New things will begin in your life. Amen. Lord God in heaven, we thank you for all these people. We thank you, Lord, for every one of us. This year is a great year. Amen. You have started new things already. And Lord, it will go round. It will go round. For these ones who are celebrating their birthday today particularly, Lord, we pray something great something special, Amen. something spectacular. Amen. You give unto them in Jesus' name. Amen. A special package from heaven. Amen. Lord will not miss this little daughter. Amen. Will not miss her sister. Amen. The desires of their hearts, you will grant in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. More than their expectations. Yes, because Lord. you are the God of much more. Mm. Lord, do for them in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. And for all those who are sharing in the month of October, Lord, I pray this, this as the pastor has said, this month is an open door to you. Amen. Lord God in heaven, new things will begin to happen in their lives. Amen. Lord, greater heights they will go. Amen. Greater things they will achieve. Amen. And Lord God in heaven, they will remember this particular month of October 2023. Oh Lord, it will mark a new beginning for them in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. They will never regret. Amen. They will never regret. Amen. Lord God in heaven, they will mount up with high, um, to greater highs in their lives and ministries in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. They will never come down again. Amen. Lord God in heaven, we pray for every one of us. Lord, whether it's January or February, March or April, May, June, July, August, till today, Lord, we pray that great things you will do for us. Amen. Mark our days, Amen. O Lord, and give us special benefits. Amen. We've come for this Congress. We'll not go back home empty. Amen. Special package. Amen. Special gift. Amen. Lord, take away. Give to every one of us in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. And Lord God in heaven, we will remember this day for good in the name of Jesus. Amen. And it will be a testimony in the mouth of every one of us in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Confirm it, dear Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you because it is done. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will bless you, brethren. The Lord will bless you. Amen. Pastor Charles has a special announcement. But remember, he said it's a special package. Pastors, please wait behind after the announcement. We'll share the grace across board. Let's share the grace in fellowship before we deal with us locally here. The grace in fellowship, turn to your neighbor and say the grace 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. I'll tell them surely, surely, God's goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life, and you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you all. Uh, this is now for the local people. We are off. Uh